Good morning, my dear students. Welcome back to the seventh session of General Science. Okay, so we have already finished our first chapter, that is circulatory system. Now, students, this year we will slightly jump with our portions. Okay, that is in your first semester, you have uh, first chapter that you have learned about your body uh, organ system, that is your circulatory system. Okay, your second chapter is about skeletal system. So that chapter we will skip and we will learn in our second semester. Okay, now we will be learning about the plant reproduction. Okay, so in your first semester where you will learn about your body organ system or about your body activities, you will, your second chapter will be dealing with the plant reproduction. Okay, so don't get worried that why we are jumping with the portions. This is only done so that you get less confused with the syllabus. Okay. And in every semester, you will be in touch with the portions of your previous semester. Alright. So, let us begin with the fourth chapter that is plant reproduction. Okay. And that is with the pollination. Okay. Chapter 4, Plant Reproduction, Pollination We already know that both plants and animals produce their kind. The process through which living things produce new members of their own species is called reproduction. Plants reproduce in two ways, asexually and sexually. In case of Asexual reproduction, growth of new plants takes place from leaves, stem or root of the parent plant. In case of sexual reproduction, growth of new plant happens through seeds. Seed comes from the fruits. The fruit forms from flowers. So, we can say that flower is the main part that is involved in sexual reproduction of plants. So see students, here is a picture given in your book. Now I think you all must be having books with you. So if you go through the picture, see here, in A it is given, once the flowers bloom, the petals dry and fall off and the flowers turn into small fruits. Okay, the picture is shown here. And there is a cycle given in it. Okay. So once the flowers are dried up, the petals will fall and they will convert into a fruit. Next is, these fruits grow big in size. They may have a seed or many seeds inside them. So if you go to the next cycle, you see a fruit over here. Okay. And the fruit has small seeds in it. Okay. In the next picture, means in the next um, cycle, you will see that those seeds are put into the soil and in the next picture you will see a small plant coming out of it. Now next picture is a complete plant coming out of the seed. So here it is given these seeds give rise to the new plants. So ultimately again a new plant and that plant will again bear a flower and the cycle will continue. Okay. Now, let us understand how flowers take part in the sexual reproduction in plants. Flower is that part of a plant which contains the reproductive organs. The main function of flowers is to produce fruits and seeds. All flowers have the same basic parts. Okay, so just now, I gave you a reading of the portions that we are going to cover in this session. Okay, so before we begin with the reproduction in plants, let us first learn what is a reproduction. Okay, what is this term? Reproduction. Okay, so see, reproduction is simply means to produce something. Okay, to produce. 
Okay, reproduction means to produce. So, what is produced in this case? What is produced in the process of reproduction? So, to produce new ones or young ones. So, reproduction simply deals with the process to produce new ones or the young ones. That means the process of producing new ones from uh, the parent plant, okay, from the parents, that is called reproduction. You see that a uh, uh, animal, they reproduce and give birth to their young ones. You know, cow reproduce and they give birth to their calves. They uh, grow up into a cow. Okay, then uh, similarly, a human, when you see, human beings also reproduce. You know, they give birth to the young ones, they give birth to the babies and these babies, they grow up into adults like us. Okay, so reproduction means to produce new ones or young ones. This process of reproduction is not only the feature of animals and humans. Okay, animals will produce their babies. Okay, and humans also produce babies. So, this is not only the feature of uh, animals or humans, reproduction also takes place in the plants. Just like we produce new ones or young ones, okay, uh, the plants also give birth or they produce new plants from them. Okay, how this is carried out? We will learn about this, that is how giving birth or producing new ones or young ones is carried out in plants. So, see, reproduction in plants is basically through two types. Okay? Reproduction in plants is basically through two types. That is, first one is called as sexual reproduction. Okay? Sexual reproduction and the other one is called Asexual reproduction. Now see, what is the meaning of sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction? Uh, see, now the uh, month of mangoes is approaching, isn't it? Now you will be getting mangoes to eat. Alright, so when you eat the mangoes and throw the seeds somewhere, somewhere means not on the floor, if you throw it into the soil, after a few days, what do you notice? You notice that the seed will slowly give, means a plant will come out. A small plant will come out from the seed. Isn't it? And that plant will slowly grow up into a complete new tree. Isn't it, Anna? Yeah. So, that is called sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction means... The reproduction which is carried out with the help of seeds. Okay? When a new plant comes out from the seeds of the plant, that process of reproduction in plants is termed as sexual reproduction. Is it clear to you all? Okay. Now, let us move towards asexual reproduction. What is this asexual reproduction? Do you see the seeds of rose plant? No. But that, but you see a plant coming out from a rose plant? Means you see rose plant everywhere, but rose doesn't have any seeds. So how does the rose plant grow without seeds? When you cut a small branch of the rose plant and put it into the soil, what do you notice after a few days? From that small plant, you will see a means uh, that small branch, you will see a complete new rose plant coming out. Isn't it, John? So, that is called asexual reproduction. That means, when re uh, plants, new plants will come out from the parent plant with the help of the other parts of the plant. That is, either with the help of the stem or from the branches, okay, or from the roots, or what else? From the leaves. Okay. So, when a new plant 
will come out from the help of a stem, a branch, root or a leaf of the parent plant. That reproduction in plants is termed as asexual reproduction. Is it clear to you all? Clear students? So, in this chapter, we will basically deal with the sexual reproduction of the plants. Okay, that is how plants will be coming out from the seeds. Clear? Now see, there is another picture given in your book. Just the cycle I have shown you. Know? There is this cycle given in your book. And that cycle was that there is a flower. Okay, from that flower, the petals means uh, when the flower dried out, what did you get? Huh? You got a fruit from it. Isn't it? That fruit had several seeds in it. Okay, that seed was put into the soil. Okay, the seeds were put into the soil. Then, that seed grew into a new young plant. Clear? And that plant grew up into a complete tree. Okay? That tree will again bear a flower, bear flowers in it. That flowers, from the flowers, fruits will come. That fruits will have seeds in them. Okay? And the seeds when put into the soil, Will give, uh, to, will give birth to a new young plant. Okay. And that plant will again continue to grow into a tree. So this is the cycle of reproduction in plants through seeds. Okay. The picture or the cycle that is being shown in your book. It is about the cycle of reproduction that is occurring in a plant with the help of the seeds. Okay, that is a tree will have flowers in it. The flowers, from the flowers, fruits will come out. Those fruits will have seeds in them. When these seeds will be put into the soil, you will get a new young plant and that continues to grow into trees. Clear? That means, children, the main basic reproductive organ in the plant is the Flower. Isn't it? In case of sexual reproduction, the flower is the main reproductive organ because it is from the flowers only that you get the fruits. Okay? Without flowers, you won't get fruits, and once if you don't have fruits in a plant, you won't get the seeds. That. So, the in case of sexual reproduction in the plants, the main organ of reproduction okay the chief organ or the chief uh, not organ chief part of reproduction is your flower okay so in this chapter we will be learning in detail about the parts of a flower you must have seen several flowers around you ever wondered how many parts are there and what are the names of each of the parts no okay don't worry I'll explain you what are the parts of the flower and what are the functions of each of these parts. Okay, but before that, let us give a small reading of the portion. Okay, parts of a flower. The main parts of a flower are sepals, petals, stamen and pistil. These parts are crowded together on the stem tip called the receptacle. The flower parts are usually arranged in whorls or cycles on the receptacle. There are commonly four distinct whorls of flower parts. First whorl, an outer calyx consisting of sepals. Within it lies second whorl, the corolla consisting of petals. Third whorl, the androsium or group of stamens. And in the center is fourth whorl, 
the gynoecium consisting of the pistils so students there is a picture of the flower shown in your book okay so if you go through these the, this picture this diagram you can find the four whorls of the flower okay so look at this picture very carefully i'll explain you through the uh, diagram on the board okay so let us move towards the explanation part okay students right now i have given you a reading of the topic parts of a flower okay and here i will draw the same figure that is given in your book okay and explain you each and every part of the flower all right so let us begin with the parts of a flower see students whenever you hold a flower in your hand okay you see a green stem of the flower uh, of the flower you know very thin stem of the flower that is the greenish stem okay and on this greenish stem the entire flower rests isn't it the entire flower is held on this uh, uh, greenish stem okay so this green stem of the uh, flower on which the entire flower is held that is called as the receptacle okay that is called as the receptacle clear now as you move in so before i tell you that let me tell you that a flower has all together four whorls in it or four cycles in it okay a flower has all together four cycles or four whorls in it that you can also say that the four layers of the flower okay each of the layer you will open and a new layer you will get in. so all together a flower has four whorls or four cycles or more simplified form you can say four layers all right now see each of the layers we learn the first layer that opens up is the greenish leaf like structure see at the bottom of the flower you see a leaf like structure isn't it that leaf like structure is called as the sepals okay this leaf like structure of the flower is called as sepals okay or and we also say that this is the first whorl of the flower first whorl or the first layer or first cycle of the flower okay so the greenish a leaf like structure that opens up first that is called as the sepals clear now as you further move in you see the beautiful and colorful petals of the flower isn't it that is some are having beautiful pink that is your rose bright pink or you have bright yellow or you have a bright red color like the hibiscus okay so the next that is your second whorl or the second layer okay so as you open up the flower you get to see the beautiful petals of the flower okay and this is your second whorl that is your petals okay the beautiful petals is the second whorl of your flower all right now as you move further inside you see yellowish uh, structures coming out okay thin stalk like structures okay yellowish thin stalk like structures and having a broader surface on the top hello ever seen this ever seen this this is called as the third whorl of the flower and is also called as the stamen okay the name for this whorl is the stamen and this is the third whorl of the flower clear now as you further move inside the flower you will see a structure like this
Okay, and this is the innermost whorl or the fourth whorl of the flower, and that is called as pistil. What it is called? Pistil, and pistil is the fourth whorl of a flower. Is it clear to you, all students? See, the uh, receptacle is the part on which all these four whorls are resting. Okay, this is holding all four whorls of your flower. As you move inside, the first whorl that you get to see is the sepals. Okay, that is like a leaf-like structure, greenish leaf-like structure. That is your sepals, also called the first whorl of the flower. Clear? Now, as you move inside, you see the bright color. Okay, the bright petals of the flower and that is called as the second whorl of the flower or also called as the petals. Clear? Now, then you have, as you move further inside, you will see the, uh, mostly in the flowers, you will see it yellow in color. Okay, mostly yellow or sometimes white also. So, this third whorl that you see, that is your stem. Clear? Stamen is also said to be the main part of the flower. Okay? Stamen is also called as the main part of your flower. And further as you move in, the innermost or the fourth cycle or the fourth layer of the flower is your pistil. And that is called as the female part of the flower. What it is called? Female part of the flower. So students, for now, today's session, I just have one artificial flower to show you the structure. Okay, tomorrow I'll try to get a natural flower, mostly hibiscus I'll try to get. Okay, and through that I will explain you each and every part. For now, this artificial flower we'll go through. Okay, so see, this part, okay, that is holding the greenish part that is holding all the four words that is your receptacle. Okay, this is your receptacle on which all the four words are resting or it is holding. Now, as you move further, you see the leaf like structure. Okay, this is an artificial flower, it has a very small structure. Okay, so this leaf like structures that you see here, they are called the sepals. Okay, or the first layer of the flower. Now, as the flower opens up, you see the beautiful petals of the flower. Okay, this particular flower has pinkish petals. So, this beautiful petals of the flower is your second word. Now, students, if you see further inside, okay, if you see further inside, you get to see this white structures. Okay, they have small stalk-like structures and on the top they are broader like this. Okay, this is your third whorl or also called your stamen. Okay, and this is also the male part of the flower. Now this flower, particular flower is, you cannot, I cannot show you the uh, pistil. Okay, I'll try to show you in the natural flower. This particular you won't be able to see the pistil. Okay, so this is the flower. And the, all the parts I have shown you in this. Clear? So see, let us see what, uh, again we will see through the words. Okay, so see, the first word that opens up is your, okay, first word that opens up is your sepals. Okay, and the other name for sepals is calyx. Okay, the other name for sepals is calyx. They are mostly greenish in color. Okay, and they have the structure of a leaf. Okay, then next your second whorl of the flower is your petals. Second whorl is the petals. Also, the other name for petals is corolla. Not corona. It is corolla, okay. That is corolla is the second word of the uh, flower and it is also called as petals. Now, the third word, also the 
male part of the flower is called as stamen. What it is called? Stamen. Now see, one part is your stamen, okay, and many stamens or a group of stamens together, just like in this, okay, the, each is your stamen and the group of these stamens together will be called as the androsium. Okay, it is called as androsium. Once again, androsium. Clear? Now, the next whorl of the flower that you see, that is the innermost whorl, also the female part. Okay, that is called as your pistil. What it is called? Pistil. Okay. And the group of pistils together is also called as, the other term for them is gynesia. The other term for the pistil is gynesia. It is, see, here you have almost the same spelling for androsium and gynesia, but the pronunciations are different. That is, here while you say androsium, here you will pronounce it as gynesia, not gynosia. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, part of the flower, that is the four words of the flower. Alright students, so just revise this picture from your book. Alright, and try to draw this picture, practice it properly. Alright, this is the most important picture from this chapter. So try to practice it properly. Today I have given you a small uh, introduction for this part. Alright. Tomorrow, we will be learning about each of these words, okay, and each of these uh, functions of each of these words in the flower. Okay, students, now there is uh, one more information for you. See, as you go to the download section, okay, uh, it is uh, many students were complaining that they are not able to find the notes for it. So, students, the notes are available on the down in the download section on the school's website. Okay, but there are different pages. If you look at the bottom, you will find one, two, three, four pages are there. Okay, so go through each of the pages and then only you will find the uh, exercises or the notes for the general science chapter. Chapter number one. I have already uploaded the exercises and the notes of chapter number one. Okay, so please go through all the pages. Clear? The notes are already uploaded over there. So get the notes from there and complete your work. Complete your work along with the diagrams. Okay. And in your previous module, I have also shown you how to write the question answers. So do follow those instructions. Okay. And write your answers properly. Till now, for today, whatever part I have explained to you, I hope by now you all might be having the books with you. So just go through the books and revise this portion. Okay, tomorrow I will tell you about each of these words in detail. Alright, okay, thank you.